So we've basically done a week now really of trot poles, canter poles, um, and I really enjoy doing this. Um, it's not all about just doing flat work or just jumping. I think all our basic training um, should carry through for all three phases. So um, I really enjoy this stage. Um, it's great to, you know, to cover all areas and um, it's good to be a start of gauge of getting your eye in a bit with the canter poles um, when you've not jumped or not jumping that much. Um, I haven't jumped for a while to use the canter poles to start getting your eye in a little bit before you go out hiring courses and all that sort of thing. But anyway, I've got these canter poles. Um, Chris Bartle recommended them to me a couple of years ago. I had a horse called Quarry Crest Echo. Um, rest in peace, my dear friend. Um, he had a poor working trot really but a very good medium trot and Chris recommended these um Ingrid trot poles Cavaletti poles whatever they're called um to try and help um so I bought them and then he got sold so I never even used them to practice um but they've been um a great purchase um ever since and I don't do it that often sort of you know, once a month or something, depending on, you know, the horse. But it's a good variation of work through the season um, to break up just normal schooling or test riding, that sort of thing. But this time of year also to, to just start getting, building up strength of the back, the back end, um, and just getting the jumping muscles started to use over smaller things. So, um we, there's so many different ways obviously to do it and um to use them and the best thing to do is to buy the dvd of ingrid's because um she shows you how to do it properly um where i just make up i have watched it and it's pretty amazing but you can do whatever you like with it with them and so basically bringing them back in and just starting with them um sometimes i just have the trot poles um very small height just to get started um and i think dargan is the horse that i've got on the video doing this and it's just you know very basic trotting around just on a circle or i put them on quite a big circle sort of like a 25 meter circle ish um so i've got room to change the rain within the circle now i find this quite a cool exercise of um doing the trot poles then changing the rain changing the bends um keeping the pace keeping the tempo try to keep a rhythm um is all really important for this and i felt it really helps um dargan what i was working on as you know in the other flat work video i find that he sometimes goes quite um quite set he can feel like he goes quite feels quite straight under the saddle so um sort of over bending to change the way um really helps him keeping him a little bit rounder at the base of the neck try to feel that the back can really come up under the saddle um and being tight enough to change one way change the other with quite a drastic um a drastic enough change of bend in the middle and then I was working towards getting quite a good bend to then feeling like a little bit of shoulder in as I change the rein and imagine I've got an imaginary X somewhere and then I change to the other shoulder in and then over bend before the poles. So I'm really just trying to work on getting into the top and really breaking up the horse in a very soft and fun way. Um, so I think he did that. Um, I did most of... Um, it doesn't matter if you do it in a jump saddle, dressage saddle. And I varied all week in both. Um, and, and so I think I then did the big grey horse, Von Berner Lancer. He's a beautiful horse. Um, 11 years old, I think he is now. Um, and a really lovely, big, mo moving horse. Very scopy horse. And... Um, he 
finds the trot poles very easy and makes me as a rider feel quite good at them because he's got the scope to really sort of stretch and stand off at a pole um, and make it feel, you know, very easy. Whereas some horses find it a little bit harder and when they are a little bit off the pole and have to stretch a bit more, they sort of can't get to the other side and rhythm goes and they kick the poles about a bit, um, which is another great thing about these. They don't move about too um, too much at all. They're very forgiving in a handy way for us rather than having to get off all the time and keep putting them back. Um, so I worked him in a dressage saddle and I started with just the poles at the smaller height as well. And then I um, put them then on their sides. So they rise about sort of three, four inches. And then the horse has to try obviously even harder. And you start to, you can start to feel, you know, quite a lot more cadence in the horse. And so I think this is a good exercise to do in a dressage saddle of, you know, feeling that happen over those poles. And when you've done the poles, try to create, create it again on the landing. And when you move away to, when you, you know, use a bit of leg to connect or activate to try and get that same similar sort of feeling as you do when you go over the poles. It's very good for try to, you know, us try to keep our balance over poles as well. We've got to react um, quickly for when they take off, you know, stretch for the pole that we can go with them but not lose our balance. And same thing, not letting them slow up or try and sort of, um, break rhythm and go shorter strides to it. It's just trying to keep a good basic rhythm and a good feel. Um, but at the same time, the really important thing about all of these exercises is they try to be in self-carriage, self-balance and really use their own brains. I think an important thing of the training is you can get a horse to think for itself the whole time. As much as I would always try to have him in a nice balance and a nice feel and a nice outline, um, the important thing is is he he thinks for himself. He they think for themselves. So um, you know any mistake that is made with these of their footwork or anything, it really doesn't matter. Just keep going. You want you want a horse to um, react and and think and be a bit more careful about it next time rather than us sort of giving them a kick in the belly on the on the landing side of it so tension comes into it and then they sort of worry about the pole or start getting a bit quicker or something it's it's very much our job just to get a a good balance good connection have them awake not asleep but thinking for themselves so i think that is um an important point of doing the trot poles or the canter poles um, so yes, so the grey horse I was in a dressage saddle, got me back into sitting trot, um, and I, with him, raised the trot poles a bit, as I said, um, not every horse can deal with that, that well, um, so I'm careful of how much I do with it, especially this time of year, bringing them back and would gradually move it in a bit, and even if it was, um, just one or two of them were raised a bit more, um, but left the other two down, it all, you know, you can do it very gradually. So he basically was doing that for me to try and, um, you know, get doing sitting trot again, really sit into it, feel balance and create more cadence, get the feel of natural cadence and be able to sit and try and um, keep the feel of it on landing. Um, so he did that. Obviously, Vinica Mira, you saw, I went trot pole to canter. Um, just try to keep a very nice rhythm, smooth transitions. Um, and we saw her do that. And that's good, as I keep saying, to just start um, looking up, looking where we're going, try to get your eye in um, and strides and rhythms. So I think that was a good exercise. Um, and then I've gone to doing... Um, instead of the counter bounces, I then put um, one of the bounces onto the middle part. So it's just a, um, a two bounce fence with the middle part being a bit taller. 
so it's actually now a jump rather than a cavaletti and then two of them put afterwards that I can use as um, a change of direction to start thinking of flying changes or um, as if you were jumping and wanted a horse to try and land on the correct lead um, so this is also quite fun and a bit different and again I do this with all levels of horses I think the first horse I did was actually a six-year-old and he's a new horse to me um, Brookfield Future News um, a lovely little horse um, and so I definitely haven't done anything like this with him before um, and so I just get going with it I'm not afraid to you know just try and get them to get the idea of cantering and changing leg over a small fence and keep figure of eighting till they do get the idea of it and it was um it was quite interesting um because he didn't understand it at times we were getting in a muddle getting from the right to the left lead um and it took quite a few attempts um I kept just coming to it consistently um kept trying to do the same you know keep a consistent aid if he didn't do it I was sticking with the aid until I did get him onto the correct canter lead but trying not to let him just career off around the school um in a <laughs> um ugly fashion but um try and keep a bit of control but keep the aid there little bit of pressure until he did get onto the right leg then a pat and then going back do it again do it again um and he got it he did get it in the end to be honest and it was um it was a good little exercise for him and they work quite hard doing it to be honest um probably a little bit of brain ache as well um but they do quite enjoy it they all had a little you know their first sort of little sweat and puff and things today and but the important thing is here even though he's a young horse and this is all new the important thing for me is try to keep him trained schooled you know it's a nice canter rhythm to to it I don't want the fact that he couldn't do it very well or wasn't getting the hang of it that he started getting stressed and too much tension into it so then he'd start running at the at the jump um let's just try to keep a consistent good feel and the moment he did run at the jump I'd circle away to just try and encourage the softness self-carriage and rhythm to it um and then he did his first jump as well and then went back to the changes um but I was really pleased with him I thought he did a great effort for a young horse doing his first first try of that and then I did exactly the same thing with Brookfield Innocent um he's obviously in a five star horse advanced horse um and I really like this sort of thing with him and would still do quite a lot of smaller jumps with him to try and keep him softer. He's quite a, um, he's a spooky horse, um, but also he can sort of be quick on the landing. Um, I've gone through, th through the years that I've had him of he would jump and then land quite quick, but he sticks his, he pokes his nose out like someone sort of shoved a, post up his backside and mows along quite quickly with his nose stuck right out gets quite a bit of tension into him and flies around the place and so it's taken quite a few years to try and keep the canter soft and really get into his back and keep let the jump just happen but on landing try and stay soft so this was his first um first sort of semi jump or poles or canter over them of this year so I was really pleased with how there was a rhythm there and he was um he was staying in a nice shape um so that was nice for him to be having a having a canter about and um obviously with him his changes were were good and you can sort of vary it of jumping the you know it doesn't matter which way you jump the poles and coming back to the jump quicker but keeping the softness to him but he felt very good and in in good form so those were just a few different variations of it that I have done this week but like I say um those were just my goes if you want to see it be be done um 
very properly um, get Ingrid's DVD because it's it's very posh and it looks very smart and it's very inspiring. Um, so hopefully she wouldn't cringe if she saw what I was doing with them today. But um, we had a lot of fun anyway. We have got a um, five-year-old um, that has started the polls also this week. Um, so it's just if anyone asks, you know, would, do we do it with the babies? Yes, we do. Um, but we had quite a grown-up baby, to be honest. He's five years old and he's new. Um, we've had him sort of for a couple of weeks and he is he's he took to it very well but to be fair um if i do it with the young ones i i did leave i mean it depends how young they are but he's done some jumping he's seen poles and cross country jumps so i left them exactly how they were and let him walk walk through the trot poles first just so he finds his feet and knows that they're not going to bite him this can be quite excitable for some. Some can sort of jump in and jump out or um, sort of hop, skip and jump through them. Um, but I keep sort of doing it, turning around, coming back, walking back through. Um, Mark Davison is doing a lovely job of riding the young horses. Um, really nice rider and gave the horse a lot of confidence trying to um, do it for the first time. And he walked through very sweetly and was very happy with them. So the moment he got into trot, the horse trotted through quite sweetly like he's been doing it forever. Um, so that was very pleasing. And um, exactly the same with the canter poles. We weren't afraid to just have a go. And I think sometimes with changes or doing different things, it is just, you know, getting on with it. Just have a go um, as long as it's within capability um and you're not pushing yourself um out of your um comfort zone too much or your abilities but it's it was just you know nice to have an idea you know the the jumps are tiny the cavalettis are tiny of just starting to you know when he went into canto just popped one on its own and then it's like we'll just have a go at the um bounces of yes oh, if he was boy. a bit close he was a bit baby like and would forget his back end or something, or run through it a little bit, but just doing it consistently, and Mark did a great job. Um, the horse oh, got his idea, um, got the idea about it, and stayed very confident doing it, and then oh, had a go with the canter poles to change his legs, and had a little um, moment where he was picking it up. He did get the hang of it, um, and did three or four in a row, where he was landing on the right lead to Mark's um, Mark's balance and weight on the inside stirrup and trying to encourage them to land on the right leg. Um, so that was great. He then, he then had a little moment where he didn't and sort of his back legs were dragging through the pole a little bit. So then we thought, do you know what, he's tired. He you know, doesn't need to do that anymore. And I think that's, that's where you know, you know, it doesn't need to be a fight, it doesn't need to be a stress. Um, he came out there really sweet, willing, nice horse. So it was just clear to see, do you know what? He's just got tired. We'll do that again another day. He's been very willing, um, has done it all very well. So we'll call it a day. But um, yes, we're happy doing um, doing most of these things. Once they get over the real baby stage, breaking in stage, um, very rideable, as it were, without you're going to get decked all the time or, you know, they're too leery or whatever. Um, then they can just sort of get on and have a go and it's fun and um, nice learning for them. But no, we were very pleased with our um, chestnut horse, Cooley Fleetwood, um, he will be called, um, owned by um, Susie and Roger Wood and Thomas. So he's an exciting new addition, but I'm sure we will be speaking about him a lot more soon. Okay, cool. Bye bye.